Hello, my name is Matt, and welcome to the Redstone video for Cops and Robbers 3. A few people left in the comments saying that you wanted to see it, so I thought now would be a good time because George's currently got his girlfriend around and he's going to be going down to hers in a couple of days, so um, there's got not going to be many videos with him in it, it's just going to be me, so I'm probably going to be bashing a bit of Redstone out, and also um, there is a Cops and Robbers video we did before he went, we did with a couple of people, Gizzy, Smooth and KK Comics. I'll be, I'll edit that when I, I get round to it, but I'm lazy, so that's the reason that's not being up yet. But anyway, we'll get into this. Um, this is the start of the actual map. This is where you spawn and then get taken straight to the room, which is inside the island over there, as you can see. Uh, we use this at pretty much the start of every single one of our maps. It's based off Seth Bling's one. Well, it is Seth Bling's one. I've just touched it up and made it a bit simpler to use and made it look a bit nicer. That's why if you see this on the original Cops and Robbers map, it's, it's like positioned this distance away. You'll see Seth Bling written on the side of it. I can't remember which side it's on. Um, but that's because I put his name on it because he made it. Um, the way this works is when you spawn on multiplayer, there's a radius around a certain point. I think it's like 22 blocks or something like that. So they could spawn anywhere here on multiplayer. That's not ideal on sync. That's not ideal really for a mini game because you want them all to be in one place. And this is a bit big for a lobby, so this fixes it by when they land on one of the pressure plate uh, pressure plates, trip wires. Um, if we come inside here, that's not the best places. There we go. If you come in here, um, if you stand on any of the trip wires, it'll power any of this redstone or along any of the other four sides, and it'll all feed into this block. So if there's anyone on the trip wires, this block will get powered. So if this torch turns off. And since that torch is off, this turns this off. And as you can see, this is a clock. So if there's anyone in the trip wires above, this clock will be t this clock will be flicking on and off, which of course comes over here. And along here are all the command blocks that you saw before. So basically, if there's anyone in the um, trip wires above, these command blocks will just get turned on and off. The reason for that is if there are five people stood up there, and the clock wasn't there, it would turn all this on. And it would teleport one person out, and then the other people would be stuck in there. So that's why it's a clock. So we'll keep doing it until there's no one there, and then the clock will turn off. Now, the command blocks, what they do is this is a keep inventory, obviously. Keep inventory true. They don't lo you don't lose your stuff, but if you die as a prisoner, you get your inventory cleared. It's just so there's no clutter anywhere when you die and if you have stuff in your inventory. Then mob griefing false, obviously, just in case. I mean, you play on peaceful, but, you know, if a creeper blows up, it's not, I not ideal. Uh, command block output false, it's really a given, you don't want to see all the teleport commands and stuff. Um, what this command block does is it sets the spawn point of everyone around this coordinate. Now that coordinate there is that gold block in the middle, and then a 22 block radius pretty much covers this entire square. So anyone in there, their spawn point gets set to these coordinates, which is the main room in the actual prison. And so if they were to die, they'd, get, they'd spawn in that room. This one sets everyone's game mode to adventure mode, and then this one here teleports the closest person to the center, so just anyone in there pretty much, to the actual room. And of course, since it's a clock, that'll keep getting fired over and over again until there's no one in there. Now that, that fires last, because if someone was to join and land in it, it'd play through all these command blocks, then do it, and if there's loads of people, it'll guarantee that everyone's, everyone's spawn point, with since it's at all, that everyone's spawn point will get changed, and then they'll get teleported. So it's it's just faster to use it, so we'll just, we'll just hop in here, really. There we go. So, as you can see, my game mode got updated, which I don't really want at the moment. So we'll do that, just to get out of here. So, this is the spawn room. That's the pressure plate you stand on, so we'll go take a look at that. So if we come out here... No, it's not loaded. Eh, there we go. Okay, so when you stand on the pressure plate, you power this bit of redstone here. It immediately triggers five command blocks. What the well, six or seven? Blimey! I should probably get a torch out. So, oops, not a chest. That wouldn't be ideal. Uh, there we go. Now you can probably see what I'm looking at. So the command blocks. Whoops, what they do is these set up a load of scoreboard objectives and teams. Um, I'll probably do a video on scoreboards if anyone wants, because I've been using scoreboards a lot recently. And I, I, f I think I know them fairly well, enough to talk about them in a video anyway. So basically this sets up an objective called Warden. Now what dummy means is that everyone's score for object for the Warden objective is set to zero automatically. And dummy just means it can only be changed by commands, like killing people won't make your score go up 
it's just a dummy. It's not a kill counter. Dummy just means, yeah, it's only changed by commands. So it sets up an objective called Warden. Everyone's score is currently zero. This one sets up a team called Cop. Fairly simple. Oh, um, I'll go back to that one. This sets up a team called Prisoners. This is another game rule. Stops mobs from spawning. And another game rule. Oh, that doesn't actually need to be there because that's on the start. So that doesn't actually have to be there. So we'll get rid of that. Now, this sets up another team called Dead Prisoners. That's a really bad name. I shouldn't have called it that. It's just, I called it that first, then realised I, I shouldn't have called it that. But then, I'd called it that in every single command block. So rather than go back and change it, I just left it like that. What it really should be called is called Escaped Prisoners. Basically, when you join a team, you can only be part of one team. So if you join Team A, and then join Team B, you won't be on Team A anymore. So when you escape, like when you get to the boat, it'll put you onto the Dead Prisoners team. Which means it'll take you off the Prisoners team. We'll get back to that later on, but just have, bear that in mind, um, that when you escape, you, you're you no longer on the prisoners team. You're on the dead prisoners team, even though it should be escaped prisoners, whatever. That's That was a really bad name for me to call it that. This command, it sets everyone who's... Oh, it just puts everyone on the prisoners team to begin with. Scoreboard teams join prisoners at all, which is ev at A, which is everyone. So to begin with, everyone's on the prisoners team. Then this one up here sets the pers the closest person to the pressure plate, well, the closest person to that, which happens to be the person on the pressure plate, to the cop. So that person joins the cop team, so they're no longer on the prisoners team. It's just an easier way of doing it. Everyone goes on prisoners, then one person gets taken out and becomes the cop. And these three fire simultaneously. It teleports the cop to his room, so the closest person on that team, of course it's only one person, it teleports them to his room with all this stuff on, which is that room, we'll get to that in a second. This one then changes the option, the, the team option, which is colour, to aqua. So your your nameplate above your head is aqua, so it's light blue, so you can tell who the warden is. You should be able to tell who they are anyway, because of the prisoner, prisoner, because of the armour, but, you know, it changes their name to light blue, just as an extra thing. And then this gives the cop a speed effect um, of, well, that's the duration, so... Speed effect, well, speed is one, that's the effect ID. A million seconds, so it's pretty much endless. And then I've not specified a rank, so it's just rank one, so they've got speed one. And then up here, these three fire simultaneously. It sets the spawn point of the cop. Um, I can't remember where that's at, so I think it's just set to the middle, so if they die, it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, because the cop never dies, so it wasn't really that important. Um, this sets. The person who's on... The, ah, here we go. The per, the objective, Warden, to begin with, at the very start, everyone was zero. The person who's on the cops team is set to one. Now, it's not really a score, it's all like a binary thing. Like, zero is no, one is yes. This is what lets you use, like, stairs and stuff like that, but we'll get to that later on. So, for the Warden objective, the prisoners are on zero, the cop is on one. So, that's what that's there for. And then that sets the spawn point of the spawn point of all the prisoners to the cell up there in the top corner. Now what this does here is at the start of the game the prisoners get evenly split into two different cells. So what this does is when this turns on, this is an RS null actually, so this will keep this side on. So this will stay on. This actually sets up a clock. When you power this, a one tick of redstone goes through, and then the piston immediately extends to stop redstone from going through there. And then this sets up a clock. So this turns on off on off on off. That teleports prisoners to one cell. That teleports prisoners to another cell. And it does it randomly. So one person goes to one cell, then another, then another, then another, and that'll keep flicking, of course, after until about fifteen, not fifteen, about five seconds. Turn and then it comes onto the other side of the RS null latch, resets it, turns the clock off, because you shouldn't really need that much time unless you're playing with about thirty people, which is stupid because it doesn't work. But um, if that does happen, if you do play with about 50 people, just break that. That'll literally fix it. I mean, this clock will keep spinning forever, but it's only teleporting people who are in the start room. And you don't really want to be in the start room when you're playing the game. So, you know, for a bit of redstone, if you're playing it with a, a large amount of people, break this as a precaution, just in case. Otherwise, not everyone will be teleported. But this is based for around eight people anyway. So that's the start redstone. Um... This is the next piece of redstone. This is when the prisoners die. 
sorry, when I said the spawn point got set to the jail cell, I actually meant in here. What this does here is that'll teleport. Oops. When they when they spawn, well, when they die, they spawn in here. They stand on this pressure plate. Oh, actually, no, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oops. Right, okay, let's go back down there. Uh, uh, here we go. It doesn't matter. This is a copy of the map. I can break it if I want. So when they when you stand on here, um, you you power this block so this torch turns off, which means this torch can turn on. And yeah, again we have another clock. This then um, it sets their warden score to zero. We'll get to that later on. Um, and this clears their inventory, and then this teleports them. Now you may notice these are at all commands, and this is an at r command. Because if two people die simultaneously, they'll both end up in here. This is why this is a clock. It'll do that to them all. It'll clear both of them. Then it'll teleport a random person. It'll do that again, but it won't really do much because it's already been set. And then it'll teleport them again. That's just to fix multiple people getting stuck in there, really. Um, it'll just keep firing until there's no one in there. Kind of like the spawn. Right. The warden objective. It's come up a lot. Uh, it may seem pretty pointless, but I'll show why that's there. Now, that would probably be a good idea. Um, in fact, actually before that, this other room here is the, um, what's it called? Where you spawn as the warden. It's got all your stuff. It's really simple. It's just a command block that teleports you out. Okay, good. Done that one. Okay, coming out here. We'll go to the stairs because I say that's the most prominent example. Uh, let's go here. So, to get up the stairs, Obviously, that's not going to do anything at the moment because no objectives are specified. What this search is for is score warden min 1, and it'll teleport the closest person who has that score. So it'll only let you teleport up here if you have a warden score of 1. If you're on 0, like you start out by default, you won't get up here. The warden can, of course, because he's got score 1. And the prisoners can by coming into the, not the storage, coming into the warden's room over here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we'll get to that alarm in a second. This pressure plate here has another command block underneath it. Well, two actually. Um, this is to change that. It sets that player to Warden 1. The reason it's done with an objective this time is because when it was a game mode, you could just punch blocks when you went on to survival. But also, this lets me keep the prisoners and the cops on separate teams, and it uses another variable instead. So, it changed their score to 1, so it lets them use the stairs. And then that just whispers to them saying you've got prison access now, just so that you know it's worked. So when you have prison score of 1, it lets you activate all sorts of stuff. Um, there are a few things, a few extra things in the map. But yeah, there's another staircase up there, that's what that's for. And when you die, of course, your warden score goes back to 0, so you have to go to the warden's room to update your um, score again. And that's that. That's what the warden objective is. There's... It's, it's a pretty cool way of doing it. Like I say, I like scoreboards. Unless you do fancy stuff like that. Now, um, the warden's um, alarm. The way you the way you disable that, it's possible to disable it, and a few people know how to. But a few people have actually sent messages asking how that works. Now, I thought it was fell. I thought it was simple, but it's just to do with comparators, and apparently people don't like comparators. So there's five um, what's it called solitary rooms. And when you chuck something in a hopper, they actually come down into a chest. And then if there's an item in a chest, a comparator detects that and gives an output based on it. So as you can see, this gives an output of 1, which is enough to turn this torch off because it still reaches it. That's because there's an item in that chest. When you place an item in every single chest, it'll power all five torches off. It's a basically a giant AND gate, really. We'll do that, and one in there. And then finally, when this torch turns off, that torch turns on, which pushes this block out of the way, and the door, the alarm, that's the door going into it. See, that's the pressure plate there. Instead of it going, hit, um, powering this redstone, which powers that repeater, it would power a block to say Warden's Office is open, but since you've disabled it, it pushes that block out of the way, so when you stand on it, it no longer says it. And that's how you disable the actual Warden's alarm. Now, I think the final part... Oh, no, actually, there's the boat. Never mind. We'll get to that. Um, the next part is the second way to escape, the new way of escaping in this map. And it's pressing two buttons, and then a secret entrance in the library opens up. Now, this is probably the most complex part about it, but I'll show you how it works. If you come in here, 
when you press the button, it says something, it, but I'm not going to show you that yet. It well, actually, we'll come to this one. It says a loud screech is heard and a hinge turns as a hinge turns slowly. But what it's actually doing is it's making a new objective. It's adding an objective. Library exit two. It's a dummy. But the way this is different to everything else is it doesn't actually matter what score you have, because if we come to the other one, which is over here, uh, in here. And um, it's exactly the same, except instead of library exit 2, oops, it's just library exit. And again, that's a dummy. So now, if we fly over to the library exit, I think it would be a better idea to come outside, actually. Make it daytime as well. What it's doing is there's... You know, no, no, I'm not going to say anything just yet. Well, it's easier to show, really. But it's different to everything else, because warden object, the warden objective uses 0 and 1 which is like on and off, this is literally using on and off, as in the objective exists, the objective doesn't exist. Because to begin with, the objective doesn't exist um, until you actually create it. So if you open this up, um, as you can see, it's very nicely concealed. I'm surprised, I, was, I was happy about how compact this redstone was for it. It's all flat and it's all 2D, which is good. So that's the extent of the redstone for it. These two hoppers are feeding into each other passing an item back and two. And of course when an item's in something, um, a comparator ticks out, so that's a clock. It's a hopper clock, really. So it goes back and two, back and two. These two commands are testing for the closest person with a score on library exit two of zero. Now, if the objective doesn't exist, like it doesn't at the moment, it's not going to pass, because it's not. there's no person with a score on that objective, because the objective doesn't exist. The moment you create the objective, so that's library exit 2, so scoreboard objectives add library exit 2 dummy, it passes because I'm here. I've got a score of 0, it's testing for a score of 0. So it passes that straight away. If I was to remove that, so if we get rid of that, objective remove, it fails because Oh, I've turned it into subtraction. There we go. It fails because it doesn't exist. So we'll create that again and it'll pass. Now, as you can see, this is sort of an AND gate. Both of these torches both power that. They both have to turn off for this to turn off. And Oh, that command that there just says, says the secret pass has been opened. So when they both turn off, so library exit 1, when they both create, that will turn off it all together and it'll open that secret pass in the back of the library. So what this is actually, what this is really doing is it's wireless redstone. You press a button over there, it creates a scoreboard, it creates, not a scoreboard, it creates an objective, sorry, and then this detects that it's been created, and then, yeah, that's how the, that's how that secret pass opens. It's just, I think that's pretty cool. I quite like that. And then, oh yeah, these buttons here, all they do is, these are to teleport the warden back and to, you have to be on the cop team, so getting the warden, getting your score up to warden, won't let you do that. So prisoners, it's impossible to use that. That's just for cops to get in and out of the prison really easily. Now if we come over here, this will relate back to the start of the video actually, oh almost as if I've planned it like that, of um, the dead dead prisoners objective team. Oh, featuring the magnificent boat by Mithrintia. In fact the magnificent prison, we just did the redstone in the island, but the, oh, the builds, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing isn't it? Look at this. Right, okay, so you come down here, that's just a teleport command to teleport the closest person back up to the top. Because if you land in the water, there's no way of getting onto the boat. You have to go down this like parkour section to do it. So to escape, you stand on this this um, pressure plate. So there's quite a bit of stuff down here. Um, you can ignore this. All this is for, really, is if a chunk unloads, sometimes redstone freezes. Now, I wasn't sure if hopper clocks do that, because... It's not really redstone, it's just items going back and two. But I didn't want to risk it. All this does is it just provides a block update. So you can ignore that completely. That can be separate completely. What this is doing is... Actually, um, we should probably get to this later on because there's quite a bit there. So if we come around here, we'll deal with this bit first. So the closest person... Well, so the person who stands on the pressure plate, it, cha it puts them onto the team Dead Prisoners. Meaning they're no longer on the prisoners team. So bear that in mind. This then says another player, another prisoner has reached the boat. And then this teleports the closest person 
on that on the dead prisoners team, so the person here away from the pressure plate. Basically, then if you're on the dead prisoners team, you can't get near the pressure plate. There's like a four block limit. It will just teleport you back to the other side of the boat over there. Um, coming over here now, this is the important bit. Then we'll go to those in a sec. So keep in mind now that there's one less person on the prisoners team. This tests for at all team equal prisoners, and then the comparator gives an output based on how many people there are. So if there are five people on that team, this will give an out a signal strength of f like five blocks. If it's 20, it'll only go up to 15, but it doesn't matter. This would work for any amount of people because the main point is, is when there's no one on the prisoner's team, of course, this won't turn on because there's no one on the prisoner's team, which means everyone who was on the prisoner's team must have joined the dead prisoner's team because that's the only way to get off the scoreboard. Either that or leave the game. But that's good, because that means someone leaving the game won't break it, which is also good. So, if there's no one on the prisoner's team, that means they've either left the game or they've escaped. So, this won't turn on, which means this will turn off. It looks a bit confusing of how this is already on, but since this was on before the game started, they won't see this light up at all. When the game starts, this will detect that there's, say, five prisoners, so this will turn on, turning this torch off. The only time this will turn back on again is when there's no, pe no prisoners left. So it'll just say, all prisoners have escaped, game over. So that'll just signify, signify, signal that everyone has left the game. So that's, that's also pretty good. Now all these, well, obviously because that's the end of the game. Now all these, all they do is they just set the spawn point of the dead prisoner, the escaped prisoner, over there. So if they die, they're still on the boat. And then this just gives them two effects of resistance and regen, basically so the cop can't kill them. They've escaped, they shouldn't be able to be killed pretty much. Um, and then this just teleports anyone who's on the pressure plate. Like, no, that's what sets up the sphere around there. So dead prisoners, escape prisoners, can't go anywhere with, near that block because that command block just teleports them back to their spawn point. And this one teleports cops who have reached the bottom of the... Um, what's it called? This thing. Cops, anyone, who, any cop who's still there gets teleported back, teleported back up to the top, so they can't come on the boat, pretty much. And that's pretty much it, actually. That's all there is to it. It's, 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 a, it's a lot more redstone than there was in the first one. That's because when we did the first one, I hadn't looked up scoreboards. I've done a lot of reading into scoreboards because of certain games that we've been making, and I needed to do that. So now I know how to do it. It's pretty good. So that's... It's a, Bloody hell, that's, a, that's, that's quite a long video, I've spoken for quite a while. But that's the rundown of the redstone for cops and robbers. Like I said, it's very scoreboard based. Um, if you want, I'll make a scoreboard video. I probably will anyway, because I, I like talking about scoreboards, they're always fun. So I'll probably do that. If you like the video, give it a like. If you liked stuff... Every YouTuber has a big outro saying like, subscribe, comment, whatever never really practiced it. I can't be bothered. If you enjoyed the video, good for you. That's that's That makes me happy because that means this video wasn't a complete waste of time. But other than that, I will see you in the next video, guys.